7. Which of the following would likely be included in the fenestration system? Choose three that apply. So this is one of these other question types. They're currently being used, this, uh, you know, you know um, check all that apply uh, idea of a question. Um, uh, 4.0 uses them, 5.0 will also use them. Presumably the case studies will have, have some of them uh, as well. Uh, so this is a question type you should get used to. Um, they're a little awkward and kind of strange because you have to sort of narrow it down and then you know choose the ones that you know are, are sh for sure and then kind of uh, make a decision out of the ones that are a little bit of a closer call. Uh, so we're going to choose three of these possible six answers and we're thinking about which of the following will likely be included in the fenestration system. So fenestration is referring to the window system. That's what that term means. Um, I always think of it as uh, from the historical thing of the defenestration of Prague. That's how I remember the term. The defenestration of Prague was in the Middle Ages where they uh, mob stormed the uh, uh, city hall and threw the mayor of Prague in 1320, I think it was, out the window and uh, took over this, it was a coup. And so they refer to it as the defenestration of Prague. And you can't forget that word after hearing that story. And weirdly, it happened twice. There are two defenestration of Prague's. So, on to the question. I got 10 bucks that everyone who takes the exam and <laughs> runs into fenestration is going to remember. He's going to remember the defenestration of Prague. Uh, it's a great, uh, interesting, fascinating uh, story, so read up on it. Um, okay, fenestration systems. Remember, this is a situation where the uh, program and the climate information have both talked about trying to find uh, as much, uh, trying to get as much um, sunlight and trying to have it be uh, very sustainable and all of that. So that when we talk about windows, we're going to be talking about the issue of getting uh, sunlight, blocking the solar gain when we can, uh, but getting a lot of natural light in. So that's what we're going to be really uh, focused on here. So A, low E coating, <clears throat> excuse me, low E coating on surface one of double glazed windows on the south side. So on the south side sounds good. Surface one sounds problematic to me. So I, I'm, I'm going to come back and think about that one in a minute, and I'll talk about why in just a second. B, reflective sills and horizontal mullions to reflect light deep into the office space. Well, we just talked about how if you read the program and you read the climate information, there's a number of places it talks about gaining as much of the natural daylight as it can. That sounds like a great answer. So I'm going to tentatively say B is one of the possible answers here. C, low E coating on surface two of double glazed windows on the southeast side. So let's think about this surface issue. So if I have a double glazed window, means I have one piece of glass, another piece of glass, I have a little spacer, piece that holds it all together. Uh, there's probably some argon gas and some other things uh, uh, in the space in between. Uh, so I have these uh, four surfaces. And on the outside, I have one surface right here. That would be surface one. Surface two would be right there. So that's two. I have a one, two, three, and four. So this first one, A, talked about the low E coating being on surface one. Well, it's possible that you might do that. Uh, it would work. It would actually be more effective than it being on surface two. But the trouble is the low E coating is such a soft material. It's essentially a thin plastic coat that has really microscopic levels of metal sort of embedded in it. And that's how the low E works. It's using those little bits of metal uh, to emiss the heat away uh, from, from the surface. If I put that on surface one, it means every time anybody touches that window or tries to clean the window, they're going to scratch the coat. And it's going to look horrible in just, you know, after any uh, any time anybody cleaned the window, it would look terrible. So you would really never put, even though it's actually better from a low E coating standpoint, you would never put it on surface one. So, all right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to X out A. But then C said surface two on the southeast side. Well, that sounds great. So there I have, uh, it's protected, it's in the middle space. There's really nothing you could do to damage it. Uh, that's going to be great. That's totally going to work. So 
I'm digging the low E coating. We're gonna we're gonna stop uh, a big chunk of the solar gain coming into this building because of that. And then oh, now we have another one D low E coating on just some some surface of the double glazed window. So it could be one, two, three, or four uh, for the north side of the building. But wait a minute, we're at uh, latitude 40, the north side of the building. There's just not going to be any direct sunlight happening on that north side of the building. That low E coating really isn't going to do anything for us. It's not going to hurt us, it just means we're going to be spending money on it and it's not going to help. So that one's maybe, I mean, maybe we'd put it on there, it'd probably have a little bit of help, but it's not going to have much of a help. So then we have E, window system with a high U value. Well that sounds good until you realize, oh wait, no, it's the R value that I want high. The R and the U are reverses of each, inverses of each other. So actually I would want a window system with a low U value because the R is one over U and the U is one over R. So if I'm looking to have a, a very good uh, resistance uh, from the heat flow, i.e. a high R for resistance, uh, that's going to mean uh, I'm really looking for in the windows a very low U value. So that one's backwards. So that one's no good. And then last one here, laminated glass at all skylight locations. Does that seem reasonable? Because we're trying to decide between D and F. D, as we said, well, it's the north side. It's not really getting us anything. Uh, but uh, F, uh, is that getting us something? Well, absolutely. Laminated glass at uh, the skylight locations. Uh, I would always choose to have uh, laminated glass. There's a couple of other types of glass I could choose, uh, but essentially if I'm going to have a skylight, I will always choose something like laminated glass. Uh, and the reason for that is if you imagine a skylight uh, with like just annealed glass, something like regular kind of glass, and let's say there's a work person up on the roof and uh, they accidentally drop their hammer into uh, the glass in the skylight and it's just regular glass. That hammer is going to go right through it and it's going to break that glass into giant shards. And those giant shards are going to come raining down through uh, into the building and uh, flying into this atrium space that we talk about in the program. Uh, so you'd have big giant sheets of glass with very sharp corners uh, flying down into the space. So one of the things you could do is you could use tempered glass. And tempered glass is what they do in things like uh, uh, windshields and things like that. Uh, you also do it in uh, glass in doors and places that, that might get shattered. And the tempered glass is where they take it and they put, uh, they make the glass and then they put a lot of uh, heat and then cool it and do various other things. So they're putting a lot of stress into the glass. And so it makes it very strong, but then it also means that when you break it, Man, that thing's going to break all over the place. It's just going to shatter into a million tiny little pieces. And if you think about it, you'd much rather have that happen than having a three foot long dagger of glass come flying down from the skylight. So uh, tempered glass might be a way that I would choose to do it. But even better than that would be tempered glass that has multiple laminations so that I have uh, a layer of glass that might be tempered, might be something else. Uh, and then I have another layer of glass, and then I have another layer of glass. And in between each of these, I have layers of adhesive plastics. And those are specifically meant that when this thing breaks, somehow somebody breaks this thing, the adhesives, those plastic sheets, will hold it all together. So even though the glass is completely broken and it will have to be completely replaced, uh, you're not going to get that shower down of those giant sheets of uh, broken glass. They're going to just be uh, uh, sort of held in place through these uh, plastic laminations in the system. So all skylights are always going to have laminated glass. Like I said, there's a couple of other ways. You can, you can talk about it slightly differently in some other situations, but essentially that's always going to be the case. So that's a better answer than D. So I'm going with B, C, and F. So in totally crazy news, while you were doing that, Mike, we tweeted um, the question, which included the word fenestration, and we got a reply from at fenestration bot, <laughs> which said, at Black Spectacles, music to my fenestration only ears. I'm not joking. 
<laughs> it, it literally just happened. There's, there's a fenestration bot. Yeah, so check yeah. it out. I have no idea what it is. You gotta love that. <laughs> <laughs>